that we require. My dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. In the midst of life, we are in death. And not even the wisest can know what another day may bring forth. We live but to see those whom we love falling away into the silent land. Today, together in this sacred place, We come to remember our brother who death has taken from us. We remember him who but a few days since was among us. In all the pride and power of life. We bring to our remembrance his wisdom, his strength, and his beauty. And now we reflect that to this complexion as he come at last. A man's life is like a flower. It blooms today. Tomorrow, it is faded. Cast aside. Trodden underfoot. Most of us, my friends, are fast approaching or we have already passed to the meridian of life. Our sun is setting in the west. And oh, how much more swiftly is the passage of our declining years than when we began the journey and believed, as young ones are also apt to believe, that the roseate hues of the rising sun of our existence were always to be continued. The cradle speaks to us of remembrance. The coffin of hope. Of a blessed trust in a never-ending existence far beyond the gloomy portals of the tomb. And so when God sends his messenger to us with that final summons. Let us look upon it as an act of mercy to prevent the many calamities of a longer life. Our brother was served with such a summons. On Monday, March the 25th, he grounded his arms before the victor whom none can resist. Laid his head 
ซอฟต์ด้วยดังมันพาสต์ไปในสลิปนั่นไม่รู้ว่าจะตื่นเต้นกับสิ่งที่ไม่ดีและไม่ดี And to die nobly are the duties of a good man and a true mason. While nature will have its way, and our tears will fall on the grave of our departed brother. Let us be reminded by the evergreen symbol of our faith in immortal life. And then think about the blessings that he brought us in our lives. Let us prepare to meet him once again, where there is no parting, and where with him we also shall enjoy eternal rest.
Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are all of people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hymn number 325, 3 to 5, before the gospel lesson. you the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John glory to you Lord Jesus Christ Jesus said do not let your hearts be troubled believe in God believe also in me in my father's house there are many dwelling places if it were not so would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. East coast of Canada to the west. 
people were enjoying the train journey. Once, uh, as it was passing the mountain in the remote uh, part of our country, both the Indians failed. I wish God was there to help out, as he worked for uh, the Rail. So the Indian announced, I'm so sorry, we are stuck here, we are waiting for some information to have some uh, help. They will wait for a very long time. Then the engineer said, I have good news and bad news for you. Always sort of filled with the anxieties <coughs> and just trying to hear them. The engineer said, the bad news is it's going to take a very long time to get the replacement. The good news is, you guys are all blessed, you didn't take any flight. <laughs> Both the Indians failed, then you are down. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in the sight of the Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So we are here to support uh, Joe Lewis and Gordon's brother and all the relatives who are here, so I cannot put your name. May the Lord uh, bless every one of you with this peace which passes all the understanding of God. Yesterday we were rejoicing here, hallelujah, praise the Lord, the Lord is risen. We have the same spirit, the Lord is risen, and he is risen indeed, hallelujah. Every time we go through the path of bereavement, we are all encouraged with the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Victoria and I, we were uh, contemplating where shall we go for this uh, winter break? It's cold. So we were talking, it's better over there. Where? India? No. Barbados. <laughs> Let's go. Before I would go there, all our church members, there are a couple of them families, they were all there to avoid this cold here. Once we reached there, we were there. First time, I was having a great uh, experience. I was perspiring like a... And I thought, better over there. <laughs> Today, while I was trying to uphold the families in our prayers as I'm preparing, <coughs> the thought that came to me, better over there. Where? It's better in the presence of the Lord. It's better to be with the Lord. But as we heard from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 40, I know most of you are not having this, but here the scripture says, God will wipe away their tears. When we are really upset, the dear one or the beloved one dies and go away from this world, the first thing, what do we do? Hello? Do you love? You say, praise the Lord? No. The first reaction, we cry. We shed tears. Don't we? We shed tears. Why tears? That's the cause of human suffering. The cause, from a historical viewpoint, the sinfulness of Adam introduced death into this world. If you read through the book of Genesis, we all know God created everything. His work was simply fantastic. He found all his work were good and he blessed. 
God created you and me and he blessed us. Amen? Therefore, you all look very handsome, gentlemen. Ladies, you are looking so beautiful. Do you know why? God created you in his own image. I am thankful to God he created me in his own image. Therefore, I think you know, I am handsome too. Excuse me, why me? But they were all so happy enjoying their fellowship. But it was a day, the moment they sinned against God, as Apostle Paul, as he writes a church, a throne, all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Lord. The sin created him, therefore the peace is gone. Yes. Joy is gone. Yes. Life is gone. Death creeped in. That's the cause of human suffering. The cause is tears. Tears. As we read through the scripture, tears refers to death, sorrow and pain. These are common to all people everywhere. They are treated by all people everywhere. Tears, tears, tears. But when you have faith in God, when you love the Lord, the cause of human suffering is tears. But the second thought, the comfort of God's ministry, God's work, is to wipe away all your tears. God is source of our help. Every time you are trying to look up to God and ask for God's help, He always comes in. Whenever we see our kids cry, especially my daughter, Becky, when she was small, she wants something, she will scream. We were living in that parsonage. She will keep crying. We say, no, 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 she will keep crying. She got to all cry once. <coughs> the other said, Victoria, this he was going on there. We had some servants to help here and there. She wanted the mother to come and carry it. That's all she wanted. For 30 minutes, she will be crying. So we thought she shedding tears. No tears at all. <laughs> she only crying. No tears. Then there is no chance of shedding tears. That's the children. But God's children, when you are choked up with difficult moments, with bereavement, when you do not know what to do, when you look up to God and ask for His guidance, God not only wipe away the tears, but also wipe all grief from our hearts. It's only Lord can do it. God's comfort is stays, stays for ever and ever and ever. It can never get exhausted. No. It stays on. We can draw on it for all we need. We can draw on it as often as we need. God's hand is never withdrawn from his children. So God's promises, when he said, better over there, no more tears. Praise the Lord. Yesterday I was preaching here and I was just pointing out the picture over there on my right. That's the picture. Mary Magdalene kneeling before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. She was crying. Her hearts were filled with tears. She was just crying out. Just like Mary and Martha shedding tears. Remember in Bethany? The presence of Jesus made the difference. When Jesus ordered Lazarus to come out of the tomb, their eyes were all filled with the tears. The moment Lazarus came out, the tears of sorrow turned into tears of joy. Hallelujah. 
That's what happened with Mary. Early on of the day, she was there in the tomb. The risen Lord called her Mary. Mary. Oh, it's the voice of my Lord. She responded, the bow line. Today, the same risen Lord is here. God's promises are always there. No more tears, no more sufferings. It's not for everybody. It is for the people who have Jesus as their personal Savior. Amen? Amen. Christians, right at the beginning, the sort of tricky and people are knocking at the borders <coughs> of Christ, remember? They were all just, it was a nickname. In Antioch, for the first time, the followers of Christ were called as Christians. Why? The one who has Christ. The one who has Christ, whose tears will be wiped away. The one who has Christ will enjoy the presence and power of God. Then you and I, I can say, better over there. God is in a better place. He's a wonderful man. Thanks be to God, I had a chance to meet him here every time I went into their house for give communion. You know, Joan, she's the big police officer. <laughs> Don, Reverend Ramey is here. You want communion? Tell me this man, but I didn't understand his style of answering, but Joan was. And he was walking out. It's difficult for him to get out of his bedroom. He came down the stairs to be at communion. And all he said, Praise the Lord, Lord. We anointed him. We prayed with him. Thanks be to God. I really cherish that. You know, I thank God for that. The bonus point for me, I went to Barbados and I met them again. We had a lovely fellowship. Praise God. He's a wonderful man. A very pleasant man. Where the Lord loved him and he loved God. He respected God's presence. <coughs> Therefore, every time we talk about it or think about it, every time we're trying to pray for God, you know, every time we went to the hospital, always we looked up to God for his will to be done. And the Lord was so good to relieve him from all the earthly sufferings. Hallelujah. He released him. With great hope, on the day of resurrection, we will meet God. We will meet our own dear ones and dear ones who have gone before us. If you believe in the resurrection of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as Apostle Paul writes to the church at Corinth, he said, And not Jesus risen from the dead, our preaching is in vain. He became the first fruits. Today we worship God who lives today. Hallelujah. We don't worship any idols. There is no tomb for Jesus. There is no monument built for Jesus. Because we worship the Lord. He lives. He lives. He lives. Because we are privileged people to worship the living Lord. Hallelujah. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, we participate. We attend lots of funeral services. We are there to agree with the family. It's all good. But what is the message for you and for me today? Better over there. If you want to be in a better condition over there, right now, you ought to need to have Jesus in our personal life. See, that is the gospel for the past 2,000 years and years to come, the same gospel. We'll sing the same hymns. We'll sing the same, we'll read the same lessons. But you and I need to be different having Jesus as a personal Savior. That is the hope we have. We are not going to bury him or remain him. Whatever is going to happen. But the Lord who brought the dry bones into action. Remember the Old Testament. Book of Ezekiel. Yes. Will bring forth all our dear ones and near ones who have gone before us. Yes. We will meet them. For that a very basic qualification. Don't think if you're a Canadian you can get it. No. <laughs> you don't have that immigration status. 
Now, the immigration status is you and I need to have Jesus as a personal savior. Yes. That is why Jesus said, John's Gospel, chapter 14, first verse, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I'm going to prepare a place for you. After preparing the place for you, I will come back and I will take you with me. So wherever I'm going to be, you've got to be with me because you are my servant. You are my son. You are my daughter. You belong to my family. So I'm going to take you all with me. Yes. My dear brothers and sisters, we are going to sow him and God is going to be raised. Yes. Let us be part of that better program and better agenda in our lives where we can enjoy the presence and power of God. The scripture goes on to say, we'll have new bodies. That is the promise of the Lord. We'll have a new home. We'll have a new schedule to do whatever the Lord wants us to do. All the still are going to be there, near to the throne, singing hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. That's what we're going to do. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Today is the day of salvation. Let's accept the Lord and glorify Him. Amen. Amen. Amen.
standing, give his standing to be a firm of faith. The words of the apostles take the congregation, they can be stand. I believe in God, the Father of my great day in our family. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the punch of Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and has seen him. from above for our salvation that goodness truth and love may prevail amongst all people Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all sins and serve you with a quiet mind Lord, deal tenderly with all who mourn that casting every care on you they may know the consolation of your love and your continuing compassion and grace. We commend to your love and keeping all who have departed this life in your faith and fear. We give thanks especially for Gordon, who was so near and dear to us, and for the love and care he offered when he was with us on earth. We pray that nothing good in his life will be lost. And that all was important, and that all what's important and beautiful to him will be remembered by those who remain. May the sparkle of Gordon's spirit live on in our lives. We pray that those who were close to him may now be close to each other. In love and friendship, may we deeply may we be deeply conscious of your promise to be faithful to both to us both in life and in death. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have the strength to meet the days ahead with steadfastness and patience, not soaring as those, who, those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in joyful expectation of eternal life with those whom they love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. Lord, dear, Continue to watch over all of us day by day. Help us to care for one another's needs and to make our relationships full of understanding, joy, and peace. So good to the family, especially Joan with a very great soul of taking care of the Gordon. She's been a great source of uh, supporter to our ministry here at Christ Church, the Lord in the past. And she loved Gordon so much, she stayed back to look after him. Till to thank and praise the Lord for his life, they decided to give the offerings to the church to uphold the ministry of our Christ Church. As we sing hymn number 415, All Things Bright and Beautiful, that we offer to replay to the past please, past John, and I want to get it here to the altar for prayer and blessing. Maybe you'll stand and say hymn number 415.
joy from the Holy Hand. Bless all your love and blessings to each and every one of us as we celebrate the wonderful life of God's rules. We offer this offering, Lord, for the extension of your kingdom through the ministry of Christ. Bless every hand that is given and bless them according to the praise of Lord. Amen. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants, to your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. In your own you are immortal, the creator and maker of all, and we are mortal, born from the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so be you ordained and you created me, saying, You are thus. Thus you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we may make our song. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He did rest for Christ to your servants with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. In your hands, O merciful Savior. We commend your servant God, in order to we pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him in the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of your everlasting peace, and in the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal, grant to him, O Lord. Amen. May soul, all the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. May the God of peace, who brought again from the Lord of Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal come, equip every one of you with every good that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God of mercy and giver of comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with all who mourn, that casting all their care on you, they may know the consolation of your love. We pray that they may have strength to meet the days to come, the steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and always. Amen. In number 212, the strike is over. 